Assalamu alaikum and good uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, so we can hear. How are you, doctor? Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. So you can, I cannot, I you cannot see me. I see. Okay, so now you can see me. Okay, very well. Uh, how many participants we have now? Let me check. So we have only Chi and Ganesh Hemant here. Uh, one, two, and three. Okay. Uh, so let me check with the uh, WhatsApp group as well if somebody else is joining. Okay, I guess we don't have much, uh, uh, many participants. So we have got three people. So before we proceed, uh, uh, Danish and Mr. Chi. So assignment number four will be from today's lecture. And uh, I have posted the assignment on Kalam. So if you go to Kalam, then you can see the assignment as well. Maybe I can share my screen as well. One person, multiple can share one person. Okay. So let me share my screen as well here. Uh, so if you can see on your uh, on my shared screen, you will find our global classroom topic here, and this is our poster for the global classroom. We have invited Dr. Aslan, as Associate Professor from Comsat University, Islamabad, is here with us. And he is going to be giving us a lecture on uh, tribological properties and tri tribological uh, fundamentals on tribology. Uh, these are the meeting codes. And then now you can see assignment number four. So if you open assignment number four. <clears throat> You'll find this file, assignment number four. So in this assignment number four, you have to follow Dr. Aslan lecture. And he is going to be discussing these topics in his lecture, one of some of these topics. So you have to go through his lecture and then you have to answer according to his slides or presentation. So I will cancel the previous assignment number four, which was related to the presentation. And I will be using this assignment number four as an alternative now, because Dr. Aslan is going to be doing the assessment for this lecture. So without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. So stop sharing the screen and I'm going to give the floor to our guest uh, from Comset University, Islamabad, Dr. Salan Ahmed. He was my colleague in University Malaya. His PhD is from University Malaya. And he has uh, conducted uh, research on laser texturing of uh, diamond-like carbon coatings. So he is expert in the field of tribology, surface properties, laser processing, uh, manufacturing, etc. So without further ado, Dr. Aslan, I give the floor to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Moin, uh, for this uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, we are doing this for like, uh, I think we uh, did this, I think, one year back too, and uh, on uh, fluid mechanics related subject. And uh, it, is, uh, it is a quite good opportunity to interact with students. Uh, uh, while we were in the uh, University of Malaya, we used to interact, but uh, now it, it has been uh, six years uh, since we you know, did that. So, uh, students, uh, welcome. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. And uh, today's lecture is uh, regarding uh, tribology, and uh, uh, as far as I know, that in Malaysia and Pakistan, uh, there is not much awareness about tribology and involvement of tribology on, on manufacturing 
why are we studying tribology subject uh, uh, tribology in manufacturing and why is it uh, uh, relevant to manufacturing so basically uh, the wherever there are contacts between surfaces uh, you have to understand the contact mechanics you have to understand the contact condition whether the surface is rough whether if the surface is uh, uh, smooth what kind of roughness is there uh, you have to understand whether the whether while you are doing turning operation while doing milling operation uh, or while doing the uh, drilling operation these are the basic operations uh, the the tool is in contact with the material the work material and while it is in contact with the work material it is basically um, it is basically trying to remove material uh, by creating uh, by creating uh, 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 due to due to friction between the tool and the work piece the material can be removed so basically that is why friction is put over here so we will study why uh, manufacturing why we are studying tribology uh, in a manufacturing course and uh, as I, I i have been teaching the to my students manufacturing in pakistan advanced manufacturing systems and manufacturing processes so um, my, my students are also uh, a bit hazy about why they are studying this uh, this uh, topic in manufacturing so let's start and uh, you will be able to understand why we are discussing this i will be sharing my slides uh doctor can you allow the uh, screen sharing in screen sharing multiple participants can share advanced sharing options all participants and the host host okay. has to allow i think uh, okay so can you check now okay One second. Uh, can can everyone see? Uh, yes, we can see the. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, uh, let's start. Uh, you know, I have been already introduced by Dr. Moin. Thank you for that. So. Uh, what are the contents for today's lecture? We will be able, we will be uh, trying to understand, like what is tribology, how it originated, how it became a field, and uh, why it is important for us to study that in manufacturing course. Uh, so this guy over here, uh, his name is Peter Jost. He is the one who wrote the famous Jost report, and you will be able to find that report on the internet. Uh, he presented it to the Queen uh, of UK. And uh, basically, that report uh, was regarding that why is it important to understand that uh, tribology, friction, and wear uh, is very important in economic uh, in uh, in enhancing the GDP of the United Kingdom. So he basically connected the uh, friction and wear influence on uh, the overall economy of the United Kingdom. So uh, after which uh, uh, the, the the field basically this field started, and in various universities such as Leeds uh, University and other universities, right now uh, uh, they are uh, basically uh, utilizing this uh, uh, to enhance the economy of uh, uh, of the United Kingdom and other countries are also doing that. So. Uh, if we start to define it basically. 
uh, tribos is a Greek word which means that uh, which basically means rubbing while you are rubbing your hand. Basically, it means that, and it is a science of rubbing. That what happens once you are rubbing uh, your hands or you are rubbing any con uh, any two metal parts or any two bodies are rubbing. So uh, what happen what happens to those bodies and what happens at the contact? That is what basically we study in this field. So uh, I will uh, define it formally. The branch of science and technology concerned with the uh, the interacting. Uh, surfaces in relative motion and with associated matters such as uh, the friction, wear, and lubrication in the design of bearings. This is from Oxford Dictionary. And uh, whether they are gears, whether these are various parts of uh, uh, these are basically the various parts in an automotive engine. These are piston rings. Uh, you can you will be able to see uh, piston rings over here. And uh, these are basically um, the, the uh, tappets. And uh, you see that uh, this is the piston, uh, uh, piston head. And you will be able to see that uh, all, all of this basically, uh, all of these parts have been modified. The surfaces have been modified using coatings, uh, using various surface treatments so that uh, the optimum performance or uh, uh, so that the uh, fuel consumption uh, can be fuel consumption can be lower. Uh, so that is why we use various manufacturing processes uh, such as surface modification uh, in order to enhance this. So all of the elements that you see in this diagram, they have been coated normally with diamond-like carbon coatings and uh, uh, which also includes uh, tetrahedral amorphous carbon coatings and more. All of these coatings you will be able to study in uh, surface treatment courses. So, uh, one sec. So, uh, what is the scope of tribology? Problems uh, of great economic, it is a problem of great economic significance, as I already mentioned, that maintenance of machinery from industry uh, to service industry to production, production industry, everyone is basically dealing with uh, some kind of parts which are, which are basically moving against one another. So, spacecrafts to household appliances, every, everything is everything basically involves tribology. So um, a brief history of tribology, uh, people realized this before 19th century, uh, or before 20th century, people even realized that there, there, that there is uh, some significance of lowering friction uh, with respect to the performance of uh, any uh, machine element. Uh, they realized it. Yeah, it was uh, uh, since like in transportation applications, wheels were used uh, uh, since 3500 BC for reducing friction associated with translatory motion. Uh, water lubricated sleds have been used uh, uh, to transport st stone building blocks and monuments. Uh, like for example, Egyptians. Uh, this is this diagram is basically showing that all of these uh, uh, the the the, uh, the uh, these uh, uh, basically workers are uh, using uh, various kind of uh, lubricants to move this huge monument. So this is one of the uh, diagram or one of the figures from uh, Egypt. So you can see that they also realize that it is important, but they didn't know that there is a whole field or they didn't mention it as a field, but they were doing it. Uh, so in the start of 19, uh, 20th, 20th century and in 19th, 19th century, these uh, sleds were used uh, to horse drawn sleds were used to uh, transport people, and uh, uh, there there is contact. So the, the, uh, I, I added uh, these uh, YouTube links so that you can understand that how tribology played uh, an important role in the construction of tombs in Egypt. Military applications are obviously there, war machinery, wherever there are contact between two surfaces, uh, you have to um, abide by the rules and regulations that are formulated by various researchers, various scientists in tribology. Such as uh, Leonardo da Vinci, where he was, uh, I think you, uh, most of you know uh, about him. He was an engineer and a painter and uh, 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 quite a good one. He basically postulated the scientific approach to friction. He was the first one who postulated the scientific approach to friction. 
uh, uh, he basically studied the motion of a rectangular block sliding over flat surface. Uh, he uh, gave the concept of coefficient of friction. Uh, uh, after him, uh, Amantan basically gave the rediscovered the rules of friction. He modified. Uh, he uh, gave a bit modification uh, on the what the rules that were uh, basically developed by Da Vinci, and he studied the dry sliding between two flat surfaces. Uh, after uh, after him, um, so Isaac Newton basically uh, you know, gave the laws or developed the laws for viscous flow. And uh, after that, Power and Reynolds, they are the ones who basically worked on hydrodynamic lubrication. I will study what is hydrodynamic and EHL and uh, boundary lubrication at the later stage in today's lecture because uh, uh, they, these are quite important because you need to understand that once the cutting tool is in contact with the, uh, the workpiece, uh, there is some kind of lubrication uh, regime that is present between the tool and the workpiece. Uh, so we need to understand what kind of regimes can be present and how those regimes change from uh, boundary lubrication to hydrodynamic to elastohydrodynamic. We need to understand that. So after that, uh, uh, the experimental study of beer was conducted by Holm and uh, the, uh, uh, the industrial revolution, basically in the industrial revolution, uh, the all of these uh, this knowledge was basically used to develop uh, aircrafts, automobiles, and railways. Uh, these the knowledge that was developed by the scientists was used. So uh, why is it important in today's world? As I already mentioned to you that uh, uh, whether it is household appliances uh, to war machinery, to industry, to textile industry, to uh, automobile industry, everywhere, you need to um, understand uh, how tribology plays an important role and by reducing the friction at the interfaces, you can basically reduce uh, the consumption of fuel. And consumption of energy is something which is uh, uh, which directly concerns with the sustainability of resources and sustainability overall. Um, and uh, sustainability is something which is a key, uh, which plays a key part in Industry 4.0 and Industry 5.0 framework. So industry, uh, industrial significance, some of the examples where the, uh, where, where the fiction is productive. We, we, we do not say that friction is always bad. Uh, we have to say that friction, sometimes friction is good and sometimes friction is bad for us. So when uh, it plays a, a positive role, such as in brakes, you have to use brakes so that you can uh, stop a car and uh, clutches, uh, driving wheels on trains and automobiles, boards and that's even we, we cannot even walk without friction between our uh, shoes and the, uh, and the and the road or uh, any surface where we are moving. So there uh, we need friction and that is why we call it productive friction. So examples of productive beer. There is, uh, beer is uh, not good in general when uh, we want to enhance the lifetime of components when we want to enhance the lifetime of automobile engines, uh, but it is good when we are writing with a pencil. Uh, it is productive and while we are writing with a pencil, the, it is some kind of a sacrificial relationship between pencil and the paper. That pencil has to sacrifice itself so that we can write. So that is why it is productive. Machining, what we do in manufacturing, we have to basically machine something or polish something or shape something. We need to wear, uh, wear is productive at that, at that point. Examples of unproductive friction and wear. Internal combustion engines, as I already mentioned, gears and cans, bearings and seals. We, we want to reduce our friction and wear at these points. So it is, uh, as uh, uh, you can see, uh, now we can see what is the actual significance of uh, implementing tribology into various fields. So this is from the Joe's report written in 1966. At that time, losses resulting from ignorance of 
tribology in United States, 4% of its gross national product. GNP basically, $200 billion per year were lost due to ignorance that tribology or uh, tribology is an important or a significant uh, subject to be addressed. So importance of friction reduction and gear control for economic reasons and long-term reliability. Savings of about 1% of GNP of an industrial nation can be realized. 1%, uh, you can see 4%, if 4% is $200, $200 billion, then I think 1% is $50 billion. So that is quite good if we can implement uh, the, uh, the, the rules and regulations uh, to reduce friction and gear, we can save a lot of money. Expected savings from implementing tribology are expected to be the, of the order of 50 times the research costs. So uh, this is uh, an important aspect that was presented in that report, that if we, if we are going to do research in this field, uh, then the research, the, the amount of money that will be spent, uh, will we be able to save 50 times that amount. So that is a good thing that basically shows that the countries should invest in this study. And I, I remember uh, uh, till now, uh, various universities in Malaysia, such as University of Malaya and uh, uh, your own university is uh, focusing on these subjects. Uh, but I think that uh, there is a disconnect uh, in the in, uh, uh, majority of the countries in the world, there is a disconnect between the research and uh, research that is being done in university and uh, what is being done in industry. So there is a disconnect and normally in uh, uh, Muslim countries that disconnect is quite large. So uh, purpose of research in tribology is what? What is the purpose? So the purpose is basically how can we reduce the losses that occur due to friction and gear. So uh, as I already mentioned, what will be the uh, uh, what are the benefits of implementing tribology into an industry, into, um, into, into your workplace? The greater plant efficiency, better performance, less breakdowns, because breakdown is something that is going to cost money. So significant savings can be done. Uh, what are the industrial applications? Probably uh, when we talk about tribology, we uh, most of the students think that it is generally related to automobile, automotive engine or something like that, but it is actually related to biomedical. Uh, it is related to beauty care products. If you go and research uh, our tribology, uh, tribological studies in uh, chocolate manufacturing, you will be finding a lot of studies. Uh, Tribology in micro and nano mechanical systems, uh, nano electromechanical systems, magnetic storage devices. Now we have SSDs, but the previous magnetic storage devices they used to have a pin was basically moving on a disk. So you 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 should be uh, lubricating that pin and uh, the disk. Uh, so the machine components, as we already this we already discussed this thing. So in daily life, uh, in daily life, can you uh, like see what uh, I'm showing it over here that we are writing in daily life, we are basically activities, tribology is present in our daily life. From shaving, uh, we remove hair with minimum discomfort to the skin. Shaving creams are act as lubricants to minimize friction. Uh, while we are writing uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the pen, uh, the lead on the, Pencil is being transferred or the pen is transferred to the paper. Good ad adhesion between the lead and the paper is important uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, for that we need, or we need basically uh, the tribology, the tribology principles of adhesion. In daily activities, I have already discussed uh, that uh, in sports and swimming also, we have, uh, we actually use, uh, 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 we, we want basically no friction. Uh, in swimming, we want no friction between the human skin and the, uh, the the person who is swimming in the water. So that is how like you can win in the 
so this is an important uh, this is an important example this is where i took it from wikipedia that uh, uh, you can go ahead and read it and it is very interesting that uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the guidelines of uh, olympic games international swimming federation this in athena they changed the guidelines for swim, uh, swimmers uh, suits that they wear because some of the suits were basically quite good and more than 113 swimming the world records were broken from 2008 to 2009 through the use of high tech swim, swim, swim wear basically if you modify if you modify the swim suits in such a way that the friction between the between water and the person that is swimming is less then you can even uh, you can basically save seconds and while you are saving seconds you can even win or you can even break records so they, uh, after which fina basically unanimously voted to regulate the use of these suits in official competitions Uh, the band suits uh, used in 2008 9 were only urethin based so in 2015 uh, a guideline of specific measures to regulate the thickness buoyancy and permeability of the fabric so it affects uh, every day's life this is an important example where you can win even competitions such as uh, in olympic games by implementing tribology but uh, over here you can see that it was basically too much and uh, due to that they have ban the usage so this is another example where skiing uh, ski has been done so uh, that that was that is related to something between uh, the uh, the machine elements or the components that we use in daily life but in our own like in, uh, in uh, if we study our own body uh, we will see that uh, the body joints are basically uh by uh, the wisdom of uh, allah or god the the body joints are basically constantly duplicating and due to that basically they are uh, uh, due to uh, due to this uh, uh, this acid and the liquid uh, you can see it over here the surface layer of cartilage present in the joint provides the bearing surface and is duplicating with a joint fluid consisting uh, consisting of lubricin H A and liquid. So basically, uh, uh, in our joints, the lubrication is being provided so that the, the for the smooth function of our own body. So this is an important example that uh, it, it, the tribology does not only affect the machines around us; it also affects us. So we need to understand why we need to understand the body uh, tribology in body joints because we have to make. uh prosthetic arms we need to make prosthetic legs and for uh, that we for, for we need to understand what is the what are the contact mechanics and how we can lubricate uh, the the hip replacements are being done and uh, um, during war and other uh, accidents uh, limbs are lost so how can we design a limb that can basically survive for longer time period so uh, tribological systems or tribal systems comprise of basically interacting surfaces as i already mentioned in my previous uh, uh, slides that interacting surfaces bodies can be in the shape of a rectangular plates spheres or cylinders sliding or rolling is being done on, on these to transmit motion and relative motion of these bodies can be reciprocate free rotate free or combination of both a uh, tribological system and tribal system comprised of contact area or interface uh, i will give you an example that uh, if you are studying uh, cam and caput interface you cannot simulate that or you cannot use uh, the flat plate on plate contact to simulate that contact in an engine you need to use a line contact that a line is basically a line contact is basically can simulate a cam and tapet so if you want to simulate or you want to understand the contacts that are present in our in our own body uh, in joints and in various machine elements you need to uh, understand the contact mechanics and that is why hertz contact theory was quite good uh, over here you can find point line or Uh, point nine or flat areas of contact so that you can 
basically add that contact mechanics into the into your uh, into into your pathological research. So uh, if the there is either a line or area in case of cylindrical body, depending upon its orientation. So this is how like we, we basically simulate in various uh, environments uh, if uh, the if the uh, if uh, for example in camp and uh, tapet in, in for example piston and cylinder where uh, the type of contact is normally uh, flat normally we can simulate it by flat and flat contact and for that this type of example uh, this this is a good example for that that you can uh, simulate them. And over here, you can see that the, this, this is a line contact, and uh, uh, this cylinder is basically making a line on this, uh, uh, on this, uh, on this, what we call a disc. And over here, you can see a point contact. This is a point contact, and uh, those elements, machine elements, where, where, where the bodies are in contact, but they make a point contact. There you can simulate it by using this kind of uh, reciprocal uh, by using this kind of uh, uh, tribo testers because there are uh, there are basically various kind of tribo testers. For example, if you want to simulate uh, uh, a, a cutting tool, which is basically cutting, uh, uh, for example, I, I will say that a hardened um, uh, tool, steel tool, is basically cutting uh, aluminium. So you have to see that the rake, well, what kind of the chips are chips are making uh, the making uh, chips are coming in contact with the tool. So you have to understand what kind of contact the chips are making with the tool, and you need to simulate that on on uh, our tribological uh, test, which uh, can be of various types. So these are all the various types that you can use in order to understand what type of contacts are present in various machines. Okay, so so uh, coming to tribological system and tribo systems uh, at the interface, basically you need to uh, we need to understand what type of contact is present, whether it is a point, whether it is line, whether it is flat contact, and we also need to understand that uh, understand. What kind of loading is present over there? And we also need to understand what kind of lubrication can be used at that point. So used to facilitate interface medium. What is interface medium? This is a medium which is used to facilitate sliding by keeping the pitch and rear of interacting bodies at minimum level. Uh, for example, solid, there are solid. They, are, they can be of liquid in the form of a liquid or in the form of a gas. We are basically talking about the uh, coolants and we are talking about, about the lubricants. Most commonly used interface medium in, in the industrial applications are the petroleum based lubricants formulated with multifunctional additives. This is one method to reduce the uh, reduce friction in rear identity. Another method is hard coatings such as diamond like carbon are used to enhance the tribological characteristics of contact due to their ultra low friction and extreme wear resistance. Because the idea is that if you do not want to use liquid lubricants, you can make, you can, uh, you can basically uh, use advanced coatings uh, such as uh, carbide coatings, such as uh, you can use coatings uh, which can be or uh, which can be uh, in the form of diamond. Uh, various coatings of diamonds so that they can basically lubricate uh, without the use of liquid lubricant. So this is also uh, another aspect which is uh, important because liquid lubricant, uh, the problem with liquid lubricants, uh, one of the problems is that you cannot, uh, the, 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 uh, the waste liquid lubricant has have to be, normally what the industries uh, do uh, in uh, poor countries or in countries which are not uh, 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 they do not have uh, uh, quite good uh, regulations. They just throw away those, those lubricants into drainage, and that is a hazardous thing. So th that is one thing that uh, uh, the solid lubricants, such as these coatings, can do.
so uh, tribological systems or tribal systems uh, uh, another uh, important aspect is what is the operating condition at uh, at the contact we we just studied that we will have uh, interface medium is there we will uh, we just know that uh, what type of contact is there but we need to understand what kind of uh, uh, temperature is present at the contact what kind of pressure is present so we need to understand that too because that basically directly influences the uh, the overall performance of the system so a performance enhancement how can it be done uh, it is basically what you can say that uh, a uh, tribochemical interaction between lubricant additives and interacting bodies. So, what are lubricant additives? Then, uh, do you know that? Uh, can anyone answer whether it is uh, easier to cut aluminium or is it easier to cut steel? Which one is easier to cut? Any student can uh, comment on that. So, Any clear, student want? Yeah, clearance or cheer. Can you answer the question? Any student want to comment whether it is easier to cut aluminium, aluminium is easier to cut, or uh, argon steel is easier to cut? Uh, Nish. Uh, and yeah. aluminium? Yeah, the, this, is, this is what I, uh, my students also think that aluminium is quite easier to cut, and that is, uh, that may be right, but the thing is that uh, we need to understand that cutting tools have life. There, there, there is certain life that is associated with cutting tools. That, for example, after uh, after 50 times, this drill bit is going to break. After uh, and once you are going to coat it uh, with by advanced coatings, or once you are going to use advanced lubricants which have additives in them. Additives are something which are which are used to change the chemistry uh, of that lubricant. The issue is that uh, aluminium has affinity once you are cutting aluminium aluminium and all the softer materials or uh, metals they, they have the affinity of chemical reaction about they chemically react with the cutting tool and once they start to chemically react with the cutting tool they actually form layers and layers they they, they get uh, uh, layered they, they, due to adhesion they actually start to form layers on the cutting tool and once enough layers are formed the tool becomes dull but it is it is not breaking it is not breaking it is not uh, but, but it is becoming dull you won't be able to do it cut anything so the thing is that uh, it, it is easier and it is convenient to cut aluminium but uh, but we need to understand what kind of what kind of chemical reactions are, are occurring while we are cutting aluminium and what kind of chemical reactions are occurring whether they are occurring at high at high temperatures because you can understand that once a chip is being formed while you are uh, uh, using the turning or while you are doing, doing milling machine or using the milling machine, the chips are being formed at, uh, at temperatures which are 300, 400, 500 degrees. And at that temperature, the, the material that you are, the workpiece that you are cutting, it starts to chemically react with the, the other side or the cutting tool. So once it starts to do, uh, to, 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 to do that, you need to make tools for uh, which have lower can lower affinity or the chemical reaction is less with that kind of work material. So you need to know. Uh, so this kind of information is important for designing cutting tools which can have longer life. Uh, in in the case of those materials which are chemically reactive and in the form of those materials which are chemically you know, uh, inert. So the, the, this type of knowledge is important. Uh, related to uh, so uh, these additives, what are, for example, if 